Hey fellas, have you heard the news that Led Zeppelin is back in town? Let's begin with a quote by Robert Plant at this show in Alabama. Good evening Birmingham, from one Birmingham to another. 4,220 miles apart from each other, Robert left England's Birmingham to travel to Alabama's Birmingham in May 1977. Past Led Zeppelin's show on April 30th at Pontiac Silverdome, which you can check my retrospective on, the band took 18 days off the road to conduct their personal business, a small vacation before going back to their 1977 tour. Jimmy Page traveled to Egypt, more specifically Cairo. He stayed at the Sheraton Hotel where he jammed with a local jazz band on May 2nd. Le Petit Shah, or Little Cats, were considered one of the most important jazz groups in the Arab world. They never scored massive success but they remain one of the premier bands for elitist circles in Egypt. This is a very cool shot of Jimmy, supposedly taken in Middle Eastern landscapes. Back in London, Page, Plan, Jones and Grant attended the Hour Noel Awards on May 12, 1977. They received an award for outstanding contribution to British music. Among the other recipients on the ceremony were Monty Norman for the James Bond theme, Elton John Bernie Taupin winning Best Pop Song, for Don't Go Breaking My Heart, and Best Middle of the Road song went to John Miles for music. Fun fact, Miles was the lead singer on two cuts from Jimmy Page's Outrider, plus its promotional concert tour in 1988. A swan song press release went out on May 16th, celebrating the drawing power of Led Zeppelin's most recent Silverdome attendance record, and 26 million albums sold at the time. The document also confirmed the July and August dates for the last part of their tour, the hype was real, and everybody wanted to see the mighty Zeppelin in action. Birmingham, Alabama was scheduled for May 18th. The start of the second leg would take place in the Bible Belt. It would be the Zeppelin's second and last visit to Alabama after their May 1973 date at the Municipal Auditorium some four years before. Now why didn't they play the same venue in 1977? Four words. Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center. Like many American cities, the need for bigger entertainment and sports facilities led to the construction of a multi-purpose site to enhance the user experience. Going as far back as 1962, Alabama had the idea in mind. The Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center Authority was created in 1965, and a nationwide architectural competition to design the new complex was held in 1966. The first of several exhibition halls opened its doors in 1971, and a 2800 capacity concert hall in 1974. The Coliseum's construction began that same year and was completed by the summer of 1976 with an estimated capacity of 19,000 ticket holders. The Coliseum held many hockey matches being the home of the Birmingham Bulls from 1976 all the way through 1978. Also in the building, a small theater for 1,000 spectators. The venue's first concert year 1976 saw artists like Dan Fogelberg, Kim Carnes, Aerosmith, Seals and Crofts, John Denver, Parliament Funkadelic, and the King Elvis Presley himself on December 29th. 1977 doubled the number of groups with Earth, Wind and Fire in January, Kiss in March, and April hosting shows by ZZ Top, Boston, and Neil Diamond on the 30th, just before Led Zeppelin's visit 18 days later. Setlist-wise, the band's show in Alabama 1977 was pretty standard procedure, except for no Holy Love with the only encore, that being rock and roll. Holy Love was only performed 21 out of 44 times on this tour. Now let's talk about the clothing styles. Outside of Paige, Plan and Jones wearing the same wardrobe from the Pontiac Silverdome show, John Bonham chose a very special shirt for this one. Looks familiar? Bonzo wore this on the last three nights at Ells Court 1975. It was quite the throwback piece for Alabama. John used it again on May 28th at Landover, which was also one of the rare 1977 occasions where Page used his Black Dragon suit. That's like 50% of the Ells Court look on stage, right? Bonzo's shirt made its final appearance on May 31st at Greensboro. So why did I choose Alabama 1977 for this episode? Past the huge dimensions of the Silver Dome, I was curious about the band's sound after their small vacation period. Also, this was Jumple Jones' first show with his custom triple neck guitar, so the spirits were high 
in the month of the Star Wars premiere. There's no magic in June at Madison Square Garden nor the Forum without the muscle work in May. So let's go back in time to May 18th, 1977, the same month when 10CC released their deceptive bands with single The Things We Do For Love. The Zeppelin 4 guest star Sandy Denny had her rendezvous and Hart rocked the airwaves with Little Queen spawning hit single Barracuda. Fun fact, art direction for Little Queen was done by Mike Dowd of Physical Graffiti fame. So the venue for today's episode is located at 2100 Richard Arrington Jr. Boulevard North, Birmingham, Alabama. Here we go. Enjoy.
Can you imagine being the leg of the second in the church? So now I'm going to try and think about what we're going to do next. The middle leg, though, really. And that was the thing that's nobody spoke but mine was from an album called Presence, which, despite, despite the conditions, turned out to be a, a little exhibition of force.
couldn't really work on the road. So when we started thinking about coming back again, and we started worrying about what we can do, you know, can we just do one hour and then go home? And of course the answer is no. So, so we decided that we'd look through the material that we'd already done in the past and never tried to do on stage before and see if we could adapt some of it for what you might say, a four-piece band playing with six people. So we didn't get really pressed, we just decided to do it by ourselves. And so what we decided to do was Jonesy decided to uh, extend himself a little more. So first of all he got a harder. And then he took to the secret weapon, John Paul Jones's secret weapon. Not many people see it. They say it comes out at night. But few can tell the tale.
The Zeppelin played eight more shows in May before heading out to Tampa for their first date in June. The rest of the 1977 concert agenda at the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center Coliseum saw the likes of Fleetwood Mac, The Eagles, ELP, Ted Nugent, Mahogany Rush, Foreigner, Supertramp, Commodores, Yes, Peter Frampton, Chicago, The Doobie Brothers, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Rod Stewart, and Kiss on December 29th. 1978 remains the busiest year in the venue's record books with 44 concerts. The complex added a South Hall construction in 1979, which was completed by 1982. 1990 saw the East Hall built from the ground up. Page and Plant came back to the venue on June 1st, 1998 for the Walking Into Everywhere tour. Many songs from Led Zeppelin 1977 were played that night, including Rock and Roll, Going to California, and No Quarter. As always, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next concert retrospective. Bye bye. The Legacy Arena facelift is in full swing. Crews are revealing the bones behind its facade for the first time since 1976. Progress on the nearby protective stadium is also clear. Neither project seen much of a coronavirus slowdown. Closed by the pandemic, the BJCC's revenues have taken a significant hit. So being able to separate the arena from the rest of the buildings, it'll give us its own identity. So it's a really desirable feature to be able to pick back up. We just didn't know if we were going to be able to afford it in the initial funding, and now we can. And that's exactly what leaders with the BJCC hoped would happen when Legacy Arena reopened last December after a 20-month renovation. And the BJCC telling us this afternoon those upgrades are indeed paying off in a big way, attracting high-quality events that boost tourism and entertainment in the area. Live at Legacy Arena in Birmingham, Chip Scarborough, WBPM 13.